So about a year ago, I made this video here called God's Chariot. It's just a short little MoGraph piece, but in this video, I did this simulation using ropes. And if any of you have tried to do rope sims in Blender before, uh, you know that they're basically impossible. Without using a third-party add-on or something of that nature, it's really hard to get good rope sims in Blender. And I was like, damn, okay, maybe I can make a tutorial on this this week. And I started working it out and doing the tutorial again, kind of learning how I did it. But I basically realized that my tutorial would have been no different from the Blender Secrets tutorial. I would have had nothing new to offer. And even though I've referenced a lot of tutorials in like the last few videos I've made, I have no desire to steal other people's videos. I, if I don't have anything to offer the video, I'm not gonna make it, right? So I kind of scrapped that, put it on the back burner, worked on a few other things until it hit me that the technique used in this video can kind of be used on anything. And with a couple of tweaks to how Blender Secrets performed this, I was able to get basically anything to have soft body physics. And if you know anything about soft body physics, you know that they suck. They're really not fun to work with. So when I found this, I was super stoked, like, okay, there's a way to work with soft bodies consistently with more dense meshes and like it's just it's free it's not super intensive and you can use it on basically anything from what i've experienced so far so let's get started now we're gonna start off with something fairly basic a kind of simple shape that i used in that video which is a helix and first things first what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to edit and then preferences go to add-ons and we're gonna enable extra curve extra objects and extra add mesh extra objects um just have both of these on there. They're super useful. We're only gonna be using the curve today, but I use both of them all the time. So we're gonna open up our little menu here and we are gonna come down to curve profiles and we're gonna select Helix 3D. Now yours on default isn't going to look like this. Uh, this will be set to 360, your entangle value. Go ahead and set that to 900 to get this shape here. Everything else you can just leave default for now. We're gonna exit edit mode and we're gonna come down here to our curve properties section. We're gonna drop down our geometry tab and we are gonna come down here to our depth and we're going to change that to something maybe like this so once we have this up we are basically done with the curve for now we're going to come down here to convert and convert to mesh now you can see that we've got some some fairly light geometry going on but if we were to try to run just a a regular soft body sim on this it would still take a while to calculate because soft body wants as little geometry as possible but we don't have to worry about that so what we're going to do here is we're going to press a to select everything and we're going to come up here to mesh under mesh, we're gonna click extrude and then extrude individual faces till we have something that looks kind of like this. Then we're gonna press Alt S and we are gonna scale these ends in just a little bit so that we've got like these kind of, they're almost like triangles, these trapezoid shapes, just so that they're coming outward like that. And now you can see we've got the basic for our like scaly kind of snake shape going on. So now that we've got this set up, we are actually gonna come back to our curve and under our curve profiles, we're gonna spawn in the exact same Helix 3D. Our settings should be exactly the same so everything should line up. And with this selected, if we come back into our curve profile and under our depth, what we're gonna to wanna to do is extend this till it covers every single edge that is available on our original mesh. Now what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be using this outer curve kind of as a proxy mesh to simulate on. So you really wanna make sure that everything is covered. If a vertice from our original mesh isn't covered, the simulation won't work. So with this one, only one other thing that we're gonna do right now is we're gonna click fill caps so that it closes our end pieces there. And then we are gonna convert to mesh. Now our outer layer, we're just gonna call outer and our inner layer, we're gonna call inner, very simple. We're gonna do is we're gonna select both of these and we're gonna move them up just a little bit and we are gonna spawn in a plane, scale it up as big as it needs to be, however big you want really, doesn't really matter. Then with our outer layer selected, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna select cloth. And we're gonna be doing the, the basic cheat sheet, which is soft body sucks, so we use cloth sims with pressure, right? Everybody knows about this, everybody's been doing it for years and for the most part, you can get away with this kind of a thing unless you are working with a mesh that is super dense, super weird, like inflating this would be so hard, it would not look right. So we're gonna inflate our proxy mesh instead. We're gonna turn on our pressure there and we're gonna set this maybe to one to start. And I actually, I found this recently that if you set your vertex mass to something like one as an initial thing, and here's like our basic scaling here, just so you see this as well. Um, and then you come down to shear, set this to zero, bending to zero, and then you do that under dampening for both of those as well, you get a much more like jelly-like uh, soft body kind of simulation instead of just like a bouncy cloth. I think it looks much more like soft body with those settings changed. So now if we scroll down to collisions, we're gonna turn this base value up to 10 
and our distance to zero, we're gonna enable self collisions, turn off our friction and turn that distance to zero as well. Now with our plane, make sure we throw a collision on and we don't really have to change any settings here. You might wanna turn up the stickiness value if you want, but that's about all you gotta do. So we're gonna go ahead and click play and we're gonna see that our end caps fly away. I forgot that this happens. So how can we fix this is actually pretty easy. We just go into edit mode and we select these faces here and we're gonna replace them. Delete the faces, then go into edge select mode, alt click and then press F and you'll get a new face there. Do that with both the top and bottom faces. I completely forgot that, that those are not connected meshes when you do this with curves. Something additionally that you can do is alt select both of these so that we've got both faces selected and just bevel them a little bit. Sometimes it can help with a little bit of the the kind of simulation that's going on here. I'm actually, I'm gonna go one step further as well and I'm gonna add a couple of loop cuts in here by pressing I and not a ton, just some to kind of match the the general geometry of our outside. That way this like end piece when it's being simulated also has some kind of a uh, like floppiness to it, a little bit of jelly-like action. And now if we press play, those will not disappear. We can see that our pressure is way too low, but we've got some soft body stuff going on here. So if we come back in here to our cloth physics, we can tell that because we turned our vertex mass up to get more of that jelly-like feel to it, we're also gonna have to increase our pressure from one. So what I found works pretty decently is 10. Set this to 10, you're gonna get very similar looking results to a soft body. So now that we've got this kind of setup, let's do a quick bake up to maybe like 200, just so we have enough frames to work with. And this bake should be basically nothing. It's gonna be very, very quick. Now we're gonna come up here to our inner layer and turn this guy back on. We're gonna come to our modifiers tab and this is where the magic happens. I've known about this for a while in the VFX world, but I never thought about it for motion graphics. And that is the mesh deform add-on. And what the mesh deform add-on allows you to do is take one mesh that is very low poly and use it as a proxy mesh for something that is higher in density. It allows you to get away with these kind of complex simulations without actually having to run the simulation. Now it is a little bit more inaccurate. You would definitely have a more accurate simulation if you were able to run the soft body on the original mesh, right? But sometimes you don't need all of those specific accuracies. So if we were to come down here to the modifier and select our outer layer, leave our precision at five for now. Cranking this up, by the way, can really, really increase the time that it's gonna to take to bind. Um, I found that five works fine, six is okay. Anything more than six is gonna take a very long time to bind. And it also does not improve the simulation that much in my opinion. So with that set, we're just gonna go ahead and click bind. Now that bind is gonna take a couple of seconds, but it really should not be very long at all. Once you have it set to bind, you can go ahead and click play. And you can see that we have got this faux soft body simulation happening on a relatively high density mesh for something like this. It also enables us to have a hollow mesh with the kind of like density and buoyancy of something that is inflated so it doesn't have to be sealed anymore and it acts like it is. It acts like a balloon or something. It holds its shape is kind of what I was looking for there. Could not find the words. But from there, of course, we, we throw our good friend subdivision surface on this. With the subdiv on, we've got this kind of like bumpy, abstract, snake-like shape. And even with the subdiv set to two, we are still playing in real time without ever actually having to cache any of the data for this mesh. And I don't know about you guys, but when I stumbled upon this, I thought this was so sick. This like, it will actually change how I do some cloth sims going forward. I will just be using this method because it's so not intensive. It's so free. And if I need to change things, I can run the, the cache again on my outer layer, which we saw takes maybe a minute and then update it, rebind, and we're fine. Little things like this, I wish I had known about so much sooner. But for now, let's get to work on making this look a little bit better. We're gonna throw a solidify modifier on this. And we're gonna put it above our subdivision surface. With our subdiv on, we're actually gonna set it fairly low. We don't want a ton of thickness. We just want a little bit so that when, if we have the camera positioned in a way that it can see into this entrance, it's not just like an absence of mesh. Also for the final render, I'll probably turn the subdiv up to three or four. Um, just so we can get rid of a little bit more of this kind of bump that's going on here. But I don't think we need to have it this high while we're working on it. So with this basically set up, let's get to work on the shader, which is fairly simple. So first things first, we are going to change the outer layer to kind of like a dark gray somewhere in like this vicinity. And we are gonna play with our subsurf. We're only gonna use a tiny, tiny bit. We're actually gonna set it to 0 0.009. This is the, the value that I used in my original render. I'm just gonna kind of copy it from there. And everything in our subsurface radius, we're gonna change to one. Now, what this does is it kind of cancels out 
all colors that are being reflected back. So instead of getting like a red as you would get if you know you were to stick a flashlight to your hand and you could see the red under your skin, you're going to get the same color as your skin being illuminated underneath. And what that means is it's just going to show the subserve, but we're not actually gonna have a change in color. With that set up, we are going to turn our roughness all the way down and we're actually gonna increase our clear coat to something like this. It doesn't make a huge difference, but I find that during the actual render, it makes it feel like it's got a little bit more of a, a wet coating, which I guess, hence the term clear coat. I'm very smart. Now, I'd like to think you guys know me pretty well at this point, and it's time for the classic. We are gonna be throwing my glass shader in here, which is available for free, both in my Discord and on my Gumroad. We're gonna drop in a mix shader, not a mix RGB, but a mix shader, and we're gonna plug this in here. We're actually gonna plug this one into the bottom and our glass shader into the top. I'm gonna disconnect this for the moment just so we're not wasting uh, like CPU power on it. We're gonna drop in a color ramp, a wave texture. This is actually a very similar uh, material setup to my differential growth video. And we are gonna connect these, uh, the texture coordinate and the mapping with the Node Wrangler add-on. That's just control T by the way. I don't know if the screencast picked that up, but we're gonna plug this in here and our color into our factor, and then this into our surface output. Now you can see we've already got some really cool stuff going on here with this mix shader. I really love mixing these kinds of materials together. They just look so clean. But now for the time of the video where I read off numbers like a robot. For all of our values here, they go as follows. 8.4, 6.1, 15, negative 2.1, 0 0.085, and five. And now you can see that we've got like the mixture of this, the, the noise of the wave texture in here and they're mixing it together, but we want more black than we do glass, or at least I do. So we're going to move this in just a little bit and then we're gonna drag our white here almost all the way down. So one more thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna open up my custom glass shader by clicking on it and pressing tab and we're gonna change our colors around a little bit. This top color, we're gonna want something to be more in the orange range. We're kind of going like, almost CMYK values for this. Uh, they're just colors that I find more pleasant to look at. We can gre leave our green alone for the most part because we're gonna be using uh, like green dominant colors. And we're gonna take our blue and we're gonna go slightly into the purple, almost like a like a, a slightly darker violet, I guess is what you would call that. And with this, you'll see that we have a, kind of a green dominant look. We're also gonna crank up our roughness because I don't want the glass to be 100% see-through. I think that that kind of like breaks up some of the realism sometimes, unless you are working on something like a glass vase. I, we're making abstract things here, so realism doesn't really matter, but you know, that's what I like. We're gonna move this up to somewhere in this value, like 5.76, 6, somewhere between those is probably good. And we're gonna change our IOR to 0.75 and leave our value at one. So yeah, that's pretty much the basic effect here. Uh, I made a couple of changes. I set up some basic lighting, you know. Um, the only thing that I really changed about the object was I played around with the color ramp and moved some of these around as I didn't quite like how the texture was falling. I also plugged object into vector. If yours wasn't already there, mine defaulted to generated, uh, which is fine, but I wanted to, to play around and I found that object looked the best. You can also come through and play around in the values with your wave texture. Also, if you don't like the colors, come in here, drag them around, have some fun. Cause you could really go crazy with like what this looks like and instantly dragging these down here. Uh, this is a very cool color combo. The blues, the pinks, the yellow, this is very CMYK. But yeah, that is the basic effect. The, the mesh deform modifier is super powerful. And I knew about it in the VFX world. You know, when you want to do like some kind of like soft bodies for faces, sometimes they do this kind of thing, but I never thought about just like using it outright to replace soft body in MoGraph. And it's kind of genius. So shout out to Blender Secrets channel, because not only are they amazing at what they do, but also they upload constantly. And it's always packed full of information that I didn't know. And I wish I did know The the people that run this are very smart and they're very good at what they do. And without them, I definitely would not have been able to make this animation. Now, if you're interested, the project file for what we made here in the tutorial will be available down in the description below. There will also be a breakdown on each one of these scenes available on my Patreon. I do want to say one thing here at the end though. Unfortunately, I've been having some issues with people uh, like downloading my project file and they can't get the same results to happen in their file. And I think that this is an issue with Alembic files. When I'm opening them up on my end, my computer can find the Alembic file because it is there, but yours cannot find it because it isn't there. And I didn't know this prior to 
finding out about it, you know, in the last week or so, but Alembic files cannot be embedded inside of a blend file. I did not realize how big Alembic files can be. So for some of these projects, the Alembic files have been huge and I've tried to find a way to upload them, but I cannot find a site that will host them for free without giving up personal information. If I say that a project file is free, I want you guys to be able to get it for free, not have to pay a dollar to see my project file. That's stupid. But I also don't want to have to attach it to something that has my real name on it. There is just that level of like privacy there between you guys and me and for both your sake and mine I'd like to keep it that way yeah basically I don't know what to do about that anymore and I'm really sorry that I kind of like baited people into being like hey I have this project file for free I didn't know that that's how it was going to work and I'm sorry about that for some people it does seem to be working for some reason I don't know how that's working either <laughs> it's very confusing to me some people say it's working fine and some people are saying it's not and I don't really know what to do about it anymore, so I'm just not going to upload project files with Alembics in them anymore. Um, I'm sorry, but I think that's just like the way to go, maybe. Again, everything that I make and show on this channel will be available for free in my Discord if you want to get your hands on it. Anyway, sorry for that really long-winded thing here at the end of the video, but I wanted to say something about it instead of just being radio silent. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for all of the support and thank you to all of my patrons who have been helping me make this possible and help me pursue this as maybe something that could be a job one day. I don't know. It's not what I do now, but it would be cool to do it eventually, maybe. Anyways, enough of your time has been taken up. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you guys again real soon.